Hello my fellow peeps who love to bust, Ghostbusters Frozen Empire has now been released in theaters. And with the release of a new Ghostbusters movie, it is time for us to dive into full spoilers on the movie. And that's exactly what I'll be doing here for you guys. I'm going to be giving you my spoiler review on Ghostbusters Frozen Empire, giving you my reaction to some of the bigger plot points in this movie, what I thought worked, didn't work, even diving into some of the easter eggs of this movie. But I don't want it to just be about my opinion, okay? I want to hear from you guys. There's a lot of Ghostbuster fans still out there. Did you buy a popcorn bucket when you went to go see it? I did. Check out my YouTube short where I show you all three of these bad boys. But were you excited for this one? Did you leave disappointed? What you liked, didn't like? I want to hear it all down below in that comment section. But okay, without further ado, let's just go ahead and dive into it. So just recapping my thoughts on the movie, I thought it was fine. I thought it was enjoyable. I was entertained as a Ghostbuster fan. I definitely think my nostalgia and love for this franchise helped me enjoy the movie a lot more than maybe others will. But even though there was a lot of mixed things in this movie, the stuff I I enjoyed I felt really stood out I found it to be very funny Paul Rudd and a lot of the cast members in there had me chuckling quite a lot the addition of newer stuff finally injected into the world where it was the lore building some of the new ghosts they introduced all of that was great but even with that stuff yeah there's some things as a fan where I'm like man I want people to be in love and excited for Ghostbusters again and this movie just wasn't able to do that so kind of getting into specifics here I actually really dug the opening of this movie because they start us off with a flashback in New York City where we see some firemen going to put out what they believe is a fire only to discover that the people within a room have all been frozen to death. That hooked me in so much and I thought we were going to get a really interesting Ghostbuster movie. That entire setup and the way it played out I was like oh they're headed in the right direction. Even more when they pulled up the classic Ghostbuster logo making it look like it was from the original movie. Really loved that touch. But then we dive into modern day and the Ghostbusters are now active in New York City. It's been two years since Afterlife, and they've just been busy busting ghosts, which apparently are now everywhere. I remember the last movie made it a big deal that there hasn't been a ghost sighting in forever, but now they just pop up every other day and they're constantly getting calls. Look. I like the idea of this sequence and the family dynamic they were trying to go with because instead of having just four random friends start up a business where they just go hunt ghosts, the Ghostbusters is now a family business. It's the Spanglers and Paul Rudd. And for moments you could see how that could work. They're talking to each other. Finn Wolfhard is kind of like the tech geek making sure the car works. The mom's just eager like her father once was to catch a ghost. Paul Rudd's just also happy to be there. McKenna Grace wants to prove herself trying to catch this ghost, but... There was something about daytime ghost catching it just doesn't have the same magic as like a lot of the old Ghostbuster movies. And that's one thing that brought it down for me. Too many daytime sequences where ghosts are just out there. And I know Ghostbuster movies are more of comedies nowadays. At least that's how they started. But I feel like if you go back and watch those first two original Ghostbuster movies, there was still an eerie feeling sometimes. There was still this creepy atmosphere. A lot of sequences where the ghosts are at night or in dark rooms. And that missing magic I feel can just be said over the entirety of the movie. Movie. It just feels like something is missing. Why am I not in awe with these ghosts in this world like I once was? They were getting close though, not gonna lie. I'll explain what I mean with that in a sec, but uh, let's jump into some character arcs in here because uh, we got a lot of them. So one of the main ones is following McKenna Grace. You could almost say she's the main character of this movie and well, the Ghostbusters are getting criticized by the city for not only the destruction they're causing when they're catching ghosts, but endangering the life of a minor. It's then where they decide that McKenna Grace's character needs to be on the sidelines until she hits 18, then she can ghost bust with them. She's obviously not happy with that, very upset, and then it goes into a scene where she goes to a park, begins to play chess, and the chess pieces start moving by themselves. And I believe this was a call back to Ghostbusters Afterlife where she was playing chess with her grandfather, Egon, who is dead now in this universe. And honestly, I thought that was a really sweet moment. And I was like, oh, are they really going to play the Egon card again? I wonder. And no, one of the big plot points that was nowhere to be seen in the trailers, just like a lot of other scenes, a ghost appears in front of Phoebe named Melody and talks about how she died a long time ago in a fire and has just been stuck as a ghost ever since. And with a lot of the risky plot points, Ghostbusters Frozen Empire, I have negatives and positives with them. On the positive side of things, I thought this was an interesting idea thrown into the world that I felt could have done right if they made a tweak to it. Obviously, since Phoebe's feeling alone and disconnected from her family since she can't ghost bust with them and then starts making this connection with a ghost, something could have happened there that would have further developed the way Ghostbusters go and hunt ghosts. I thought the movie was going to try and play on a sort of like civil rights kind of 
of way on ghosts, which I know might sound dumb, but hear me out. In all the Ghostbuster movies, the Ghostbusters just treat ghosts like monsters, like nasty things they need to catch, pests, and then they lock them away in these cages for there to be stuck like forever. And well, in the last movie, we had an entire sequence dedicated to Egon, you know, passing over, fulfilling his purpose, and then going to the greater beyond. What if ghostbusting didn't have to be you just catching the ghost, you just getting rid of the monster and caging them up somewhere? What if part of ghostbusting involved helping these ghosts find their purpose and assist them with crossing over on the other side. I thought maybe that's where we were headed and that Phoebe would kind of become a defender of ghosts of like, you can't treat these people like science experiments. You can't just lock them up, study them and do all that. These were people once too. And I felt like that would have been a fascinating exploration of the Ghostbusters world, but uh, it didn't go down that route. And just to clarify, cause I can already see some comments saying, Chris, that's such a boring idea for Ghostbusters. I'm not saying every ghost needed to be caught that way. There's obviously, tons of ghosts that they fight that have no redemption or even ability to cross on the other side and that's the ghosts we still catch in a harsh way. But still, I thought it could have been something new they added on. Instead, the friendship gets really played out and cliched and you find out at one point this Melody ghost is actually secretly working for the big bad of the movie, Garaka, trying to eventually trick McKenna Grace to say a couple of words out loud so he can take over her body and free himself, which, by the way, that entire sequence, while really cool was super convoluted and there was no way Melody knew that McKenna Grace would at one point offer her body to separate from her soul to touch her in the ghost world. There's no way she thought that's what was eventually going to happen. And a lot of the plot gets a little too complicated because we have way too many characters in here. Bill Murray and Annie Potts unfortunately were those characters that just blended into the background. Bill Murray shows up randomly in one scene that's supposed to be like a callback in Easter egg to the science experiment he had in the original movie, but this time with Kumail Nanjiani. And while I still adore seeing Bill Murray in the Ghostbusters outfit, busting out a joke here and there, one-liners, that's always fun to see, his purpose in the movie felt purely nostalgia bait, and that's just a little sad. But then we get on to Ernie Hudson and Dan Aykroyd. Now, Ernie Hudson, I'm still very fascinated. I love that they made him this, like, CEO, entrepreneur, businessman. He has his company. We don't really get to see much of what his company is or how it makes money, because I don't think him ghostbusting is making him money. But the elements they did include in this movie where Ernie Hudson has been investing in this Ghostbuster laugh. He has other employees who are like engineers in the Ghostbuster world, making new gadgets, studying the ghosts, trying to figure out as much as possible about them. Love, love, love those ideas. I thought it was odd that the movie let these characters be Ghostbusters for two years and never let them know there was this lab and research facility of other Ghostbuster members, but whatever. Because again, that's the stuff that got me the most excited in this is the new ghost. The little possessor red dot ghost that's able to like control inanimate objects. They were able to do a lot of cool things from the lion statue to the little chairs. The moment that ghost took over the Ecto-1 and played homage to like Christine in a possessed car, I was like... Dude, yes, this is the Ghostbuster stuff we need to see more of. And I would say Dan Aykroyd, out of all the legacy characters, was given kind of the best arc, but even then, he barely got his screen time. You can for sure tell he's the Ghostbuster who misses the glory days, who misses being the one on top, the one chasing the ghost, making these discoveries. He's still trying to relive it somehow, and they gave him a small relationship with podcasts, which, hey, still love podcast in here. Logan, Kim, you need to be in more movies, dude, because you are very funny. But him having his, like, weird little YouTube channel and buying all these haunted objects and just trying to secure them and make sure no ghosts keep coming out, I love that for him. I just, again, think there wasn't much of a payoff to that arc and that story he was fulfilling. Moving on to the other risky plot point thrown in this movie that, again, I have negatives and I have positives with Kumail Nanjiani. So he plays a guy named Nadim, who's just kind of this wannabe entrepreneur, is really just reselling sneakers, old technology, going into his grandma's belongings and seeing what he can make a quick buck out of. He added a lot of humor to the movie and was just a welcome addition in my opinion. But the thing they do with him is that they connect his backstory to this ancient group of people in the Ghostbusters universe that would have these fire abilities and they would be in charge of capturing these evil spirits in spheres. And that's what happened in the opening flashback of this movie. His great grandmother was one of those firepower people that trapped Garaka in his little sphere 
here. And now because he was rummaging through her belongings, he put Garaka at risk to escape. So a couple of things on that. I actually kind of love that backstory. And I think that was a really interesting thing to add into the Ghostbusters world because it was a way of saying the Ghostbusters aren't the first ghost catchers. There have been many forms and different iterations of ghost catchers in history, whether people who are capturing spirits, exorcisms or whatnot. Ghostbusters are just one modern day form of that. And so I kind of like this idea that there was these group of people that would be capturing and ghost busting way back in the day. I thought that just made the world rich. But then where it got really goofy and dumb for me is when we get to the third act and he's in this full brass armor and he's supposed to fight Garaka, this ice monster. And the guy basically becomes Johnny Storm Human Torch or a person who's a firebender in the Avatar universe and is just controlling fire and doing all these things. It didn't feel like it fit into the Ghostbusters world, especially also because they just didn't even dive into that power set too much because it's like, okay, well, now that you caught Garaka and that's all over with, are we just going to have a Ghostbuster with fire abilities on the team? Because that entirely changes the dynamic of how Ghostbusting is done. Who knows if we're going to get that third movie or not, but if we did, does that mean he's on the team and he's just going to be firebending every time they go catching ghosts? I feel like that removes an interesting element out of the Ghostbusters universe if each one of them start getting powers now. And and that's why I keep saying the movie was mixed for me because I get what they were trying to do at some points. I did like the ideas. It was the execution of them. And then the impact that it has in the Ghostbusters universe is like, is that something that'll work and continue on going? Heck, I didn't really even get to talk about Garaka himself. They did a great job of building up his presence, how evil he is. But the movie, because of so many characters and trying to give everyone a story and then overcomplicating the narrative, by the time Garaka finally comes out and starts freezing the town, we only get a total of like 15 minutes with him. And that kind of sucks because his design was awesome. It was a mix of CG and some practical effects. Seeing all the Ghostbusters come together and try to defeat him was a lot of fun. I do wish some of the tension filled moments weren't ruined with comedy. Like when Kamel Nanjiani came down through the pole right when he was getting vicious. But then they defeat him. It's over with. And then the Ghostbusters just go back to doing what they do. And you could think the adventure goes on or this franchise ends here. Right now, unfortunately, since the movie is getting like terrible reviews for the critics, I really do not agree with that score and I think some people are being overly harsh with just a fine movie It's still enjoyable in my opinion Like even there at the end where Phoebe calls Paul Rudd's character dad Like that's a sweet moment that makes me want to see these characters again and have them continue on ghost busting I just feel like something needs to be redone No offense to Gil Kinnan who did the directing of this movie but we need a different kind of atmosphere, a different kind of look. And although I felt like there was less nostalgia in here than the last movie, yeah, I also agree. Some of the nostalgic things need to be let go of. It's time to just retire some of the legacy characters, especially if they have nothing to do in this movie. Because even just including the little Stay Puft Marshmallows, yeah, they're adorable, sweet, and it feels like Stay Puft Marshmallow is just a staple of Ghostbusters, but there's no purpose for them to be in this movie at all. I don't know. I don't think Ghostbusters is dead, or at least I hope it doesn't die just yet. The box office projections are looking for this to be okay. Thankfully, since Sony kept a low budget on this movie, it'll probably turn a profit. So I would say a third movie in this new series is kind of up in question. Honestly, I think the biggest thing that might take the franchise to the next level and actually excite some people is the animated movie they're working on. Sony Pictures is saying they're going to make their own Ghostbusters movie. And I know that might annoy some of the older fans, but uh, you need young blood in your franchise to carry it on and get people excited excited again and I think that animated movie depending on the animation style the story they go with could be the thing to actually reignite the franchise but we'll have to wait and see because we have not gotten an update on that animated film I don't even know if there was a point to talk about the post credit scene it was just a Stay Puft Marshmallow stealing a marshmallow truck if anything I thought a giant hand was going to come out and kind of tease the big puff marshmallow but that didn't happen. It's really going to be about the amount of money this movie makes, whether we get another live action third film or we're going to have to wait another 10 years for a reboot or something else. Let me know your guys' opinions on Ghostbusters Afterlife. Don't forget to like, subscribe, follow me on Twitter at 3C Films or on TikTok at 3C Films. But as always, I'm Chris. Take care.